Uh, it's kind of following breadcrumbs, actually, in, in what we're doing, because we've been pushing through Genesis, but I wanted us to approach it from the New Testament, find out what the New Testament had to say about some of these passages. So that's that's where we started last week. And just, uh, just to remember, we talked a little bit about uh, Hagar um, causing problems for Sarah in the Old Testament, and of course Ishmael's mocking when they had this celebration for Isaac's birth and they were put away. And all of this was God to meeting his people where they were at at the time, you know, and giving them choices. That was kind of what it was all about. And uh, we talked a little bit about these people are archetypes. They're types of people throughout Scripture, and we're intended to put ourselves in those roles and think about it, too. So the people that lived, and they're recorded in such a way that we put ourselves in those shoes. And, and God um, then uses that to prepare us, you know, to, to understand. So just jumping right into it, um, and I think in uh, there, so that was actually supposed to be uh, uh, Genesis 21, and then it's Galatians uh, 4. Um, but in talking about Ishmael and Isaac, Paul says this to the church of Galatia, tell me you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it was written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. And his son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, and his son by the free woman was born as a result of the divine promise. So we have this child of the flesh that represents slavery, and we have a child of promise who represents freedom. And he was told to put one of them away, send them out into the wilderness. And the idea was you can be bound by the things that you did out of your own desires, you know, by the things that you seek out without God's leading. And instead, you're freed by the will of God and by the promises of God and by following that. And Paul goes on and says these things would be taken figuratively. One woman, the two women represent two covenants. So the old and the new, and it says this, you now, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of the promise. At that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the spirit. It is the same now. But what does scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the, fruit, the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. So he's putting it all together. He's all this figurative speech. And he's basically saying that flesh persecutes the spirit. If we don't put away the things that came before God came to us, that's going to continue to hinder us. It's going to keep us from following after what he has offered us. Um, so there's this blessing and freedom that comes through promise. And I just wanted to recap that because the title of the, of the uh, sermon is Image Bearers. He's telling us to bear the image of freedom. Bear the image of freedom with us. Don't bear the image of whatever once had you in slavery. Don't bear the image of the things that you did in the flesh. Bear the image of freedom. And so that jumps us into where actually we left off last week. Um, and Paul uh, writes to his, the church at Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and he's talking about Adam and Jesus. He says, if there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. So there's a natural disposition that we have that comes first. Each of us is born. Each of us is, is a little more than a, a narcissistic little bundle of flesh when we're born. You know, you know how babies are, right? It, but the flesh dies. So the first Adam died. We're each of us given this temporary dwelling, and we have temporary struggles while we live in the flesh, in this life. But he said that there was a second Adam, the last Adam, who was a life-giving spirit. There he's talking about Jesus, the second Adam. He's the second man. And he came and he brought the spirit, and he brought life. So the passage goes on. It says, the first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. And that's where we got our title from, image bearers. We are to bear the image of the heavenly man, bear the image of Christ. So not just we bear the image of freedom, because God made promises to us. God has separated us from, from what we did before, but we're also to bear the image of of Jesus himself and look at him and carry that with us. So one's earthly and one's heavenly. And our perspective always starts out as created. It always starts with the earthly. We always see the earthly first and then the heavenly has to be revealed to us. 
But the reality is it all began because of the Creator. It began in the heavenlies. We were created. The earth was created. And then the heavenly was offered to us again, even after it was broken. So you have to accept God and represent something eternal. You have to represent the heavenly man. We're created in the image of God, and we're supposed to bear the image of Jesus. Bear that image. And I thought one of the better ways to really describe this was to go to a New Testament response that Jesus gave. And this one is uh, him talking to Nicodemus, and it, it comes from, <clears throat> I think, John chapter 3. And he starts talking about water and spirit. He says, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So a couple of interesting things to notice. One of them is Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. He's, he's interested. He wants to know. He knows there's something else going on. But he's afraid. He won't come to him during the day. And I think that there's, um, you see a lot of that in this world. There are people who are interested in what God has to say, but they're not willing to come and see because they're afraid of what others will say. But Jesus gives him this reply, you know, you must be born again. And we're told that it's a matter of the kingdom. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So he goes on to say this, how can someone be born again when they are old? And he was asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb. And Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. So Jesus is introducing this idea of the Spirit to Nicodemus. And he, he basically is saying, you have to be born into the kingdom of God. Just because you're born into the kingdom of the earth, born into this world. And Nicodemus has this perspective of a clay vessel. He is just flesh. This thing formed just like we saw in Genesis. And he can't see past it. So we're created, each one of us, in the flesh. We all know this, but we have to choose the Spirit. That's what it means to be born again. Each of us grow into this perspective then where we can understand a little bit more about God as our Creator. We, we mature. Um, but the Spirit of the Creator gives you this moral capacity to begin with. The Holy Spirit guides and leads us forward. So we're all born of the flesh and at times we're just like Nicodemus. You know, we, That's all we can see. But when we choose the Spirit, we can be born again and we can be part of, of God's kingdom. When we accept Jesus and his Holy Spirit, we can be born again. So Nicodemus has the questions that so many ask. How can this be? You're Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. So Jesus is saying, look, you've, you've seen these things. We know the Spirit. We know the Holy Spirit. And here I am, Jesus. This is something you can see. He goes on, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. So he's saying, look, you haven't even understood earthly things. You haven't been committed enough to the truth in things that anybody can see. Even if they don't belong to God. You haven't been committed enough to that. So how then can you possibly understand the spiritual things? You haven't even understood the way a little child is. Because a child is honest. Right? A child explores this world and they, they know what they see. It says if you can't you know, give an honest accounting of the things that you can see naturally, how can you understand the spiritual? And he points ahead and he says, look, Moses lifted up that staff and that serpent in the wilderness. In the same way, I'm going to be lifted up. He's saying, I was pointing to all these things from the very beginning. All of those events that you encounter in Genesis, all of those things, the ones that you encounter in the Exodus, all of those things were pointing towards this moment. They point towards the cross. It was raised up for healing for the people of Israel. And Jesus will be raised up for people who are spiritual, people who choose the Holy Spirit. I want to continue here 
and, and see what, the, give context. Um, because we have a verse coming up that we all uh, hear and we see it at, at ball games. And you have to realize the context is this conversation with Nicodemus. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So within the context of this conversation with Nicodemus, where he is struggling to understand, because all he can see is, is this, the things before him, Jesus is saying, you need to be honest, and you need to be born again in the Spirit. You need to accept what I'm going to offer. It points towards the cross. It points towards this God, the love that God has, and it's love like a parent. And I think that that's another way that he gets us there. He gives us this example. He's the father sending his son. And it's something we can understand in the flesh. Any of your parents, you understand what it's like to be a parent, to be a father or a mother. You understand. And that, in the way, leads to and reveals what can only be understood by the Spirit, which is that God loves us so much that he sent his son. So not only bear that image of Jesus, but bear image of the spirit that God places within us when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that spirit, you're going to see fruit of the spirit. You're going to see boldness because we're given a spirit of strength, not of timidity, right? You're going to see a spirit of faith when doubt assails you. And finally, to get back to, I think, the first, we're going to step back in John. Um, it says, the verdict is this, the light has come into the world. But people love the darkness instead of the light because of their deed, because their deeds were evil. And everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear of their deed, that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So there's a verdict here that's given to us. There's a verdict that people lack enough humility to come to God and accept that God's the one who has to cover them. They try and do it themselves. It says they desire the flesh. Basically, it says their, their deeds were evil, and they love their evil deeds. They're like child, children in their, in their desires. There's no discipline, there's no understanding, so they choose slavery. They choose Ishmael. They choose Hagar. They choose what they did before rather than choosing to move forward in what God has for them. They value their shame, their greed, their lust, and it leads them to reject, so they choose Adam over Jesus. They choose the one who is dead and perished over the one who is risen and living at the right hand of the Father. And what they do is they try and cover themselves just the way Adam did. And it's saying those who live in those deceptions of the flesh cannot begin to understand the Holy Spirit. So instead they choose the spirit of this age. You've ever, if you've ever heard or read where it talks about the spirit of Antichrist, it's everything that stands up against Christ. And that is the spirit of the age. So living in the deceptions of the flesh, they can't understand the spirit. They make fun of the things that they don't understand. And just like Ishmael, they're mockers. Mockers hate the light. So they choose darkness. But we know that God sees. We know that God forgives. But we have to understand God requires recognition. You have to understand that he's the one who delivers you. No one ever delivered themselves. And he's the one who delivers you even if you struggle. But we have choices, and these choices have been put before us from beginning to end in Scripture. You have to choose what image you will bear. And here's where I, I said we've got to go back. John chapter 1, as opposed to chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. Um, I think it sums up the way he's been pursuing us from the beginning. That all that we understand, all that's put forward is something that was foretold and foreshadowed in Scripture. It was foretold and foreshadowed in Genesis. And it was written for you and for me to prepare the way. It sums up this eternal nature. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not know, <clears throat> did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but he did not, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a husband's will, but born of God. 
That takes us right back to Abraham and to his two sons. So what are our choices? Those that are laid out before us. Bear the image of freedom. We're summing it up now. Bear the image of freedom. Free from the decisions that you made that were separate from God. You can cast off that slavery. And each of us has things that we chose before we knew God. We probably have some things we've chosen after knowing God. We also have to cast off. But instead, we should bear the image of freedom. Bear the image of Jesus. Bear the image of the one who's risen and not the Adam who is dead. We're to be transformed throughout our life in Christ. Bear the image of the Holy Spirit rather than the flesh which limits what you see and limits your understanding of God. Bear the image of the Holy Spirit rather than the spirit of this age. And bear the image of life. Wisdom, it's understanding. It's light that casts out darkness. And all of this, if we had to sum it up in one of those, is bearing the image of Jesus. That's absolutely where we got the title. It's a matter of choices that God has pointed us toward from the very beginning. You'll find it in the Old Testament, you'll find it in the New, and you'll find it threaded throughout. God has been pointing us to the image bearers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father,